everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to So Custom. Today's video, as you will have already seen from the thumbnail, is how I made this little number. So if you're interested in seeing how I sewed it up, then let's get started. Starting with the fabric, this is an ITY. It has stretch in both directions. It's really drapey and good for a project like this. And on to the cutting out. This is my back pattern piece. My fabric underneath is on the fold. I have a couple of notches at the sleeve and one at the centre of the neck. So that's that done. So the first thing I'm going to do to this piece is stabilise the neckline. I'm using some stretch tape. It's the iron-on type and I'm just lining it up with the neckline and pressing into place. Trimming the excess, so that's that done. So for this dress I've decided on a bias finish just on the back. So I've cut myself a strip of the outer fabric and I'm just lining it up with one side of the neckline and pinning into place. And stitching here at my one centimetre seam allowance. Back stitching to start. Making tiny little adjustments the whole way around. Trying to make sure that my edges line up and back stitching to finish. So now I just need to trim that seam allowance back. So I'm taking off probably about two thirds here. I'll finish that off camera. So that's that done. So now to press that bias tape away from the dress, but make sure that that trim seam allowance in underneath is butted up against the bias. So you can see that here. And now to understitch. Back stitching to start. I'm about a millimetre or two away from the seam that you've just seen me sew, trying to stick to that measurement the whole way around and back stitching to finish. And all this understitching is doing is helping the bias tape to sit nice and flat in underneath. So now I just need to finish that raw edge. So just folding the bias back over the dress, making sure I can see that understitching at the edge and then folding that raw edge in underneath. Pressing and pinning into place. And once it's all done, this is how it looks and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start, sewing right along that inner crease edge or as close to it as I can possibly get. Taking it nice and gentle here and back stitching to finish. So that just needs a good press and that's my back neckline complete. So now this piece is ready to be joined to the front at the shoulders. But I have a little bit of work to do before I can do that. So on to my front. I have one layer of fabric underneath this pattern piece. A notch at the sleeve and a notch at the centre front neck. And as you will have already seen from the thumbnail, this front piece has a lot of pleats. So I'm going to mark the leg of each pleat with a notch. So just lining my scissors up with the leg of the pleat and snipping into that seam allowance. I'll finish that off camera. So that's my pleats all marked and ready to be pinned. And off camera, I've just finished the front neck in exactly the same way as I did the back. So I've just added a little bit of that press on stabilizing tape. And as I say, now I'm ready to pin up my pleats. So starting at the bottom of the curve, I'm pinching the fabric right on the second notch, creating that little pleat and pulling it down to the first notch. So I'll do that again. So pinching the fabric at the second notch, creating that little pleat, pulling it down to the first notch and pinning in place. And one more time. So that's the first three done. And I've just speeded up this footage so that you guys don't have to sit through the whole thing. This did take a while to do. 
just repeating the same thing over and over for every single one of those pleats. So that's all my pleats pinned. So you can start to see the effect that this will have. So now the next thing I want to do is just tack those pleats into place. So I'm just going to run a stitch line within my seam allowance right along that curve. Back stitching to start and to finish and that will just hold all of my pleats in place for me. So off camera I've given that a little bit of a press and now that that's done I'm ready to add the ruffle piece down the front. So I have two layers of fabric underneath this pattern piece. So that's that done. And now I want to join these together around the outer edge. So laying one over the other right sides together, making sure my edges are all lined up and pinning into place. Ready to stitch. Stitching here at my one centimeter seam alliance. Back stitching to start, pivoting up my corners Taking it nice and slowly here, I want to make sure that I'm maintaining that beautiful curve and backstitching to finish. So that's that done. So off camera I've given the whole thing a good press, trimmed back that seam alliance with pinking shears, so you can see that here. And my next step is to understitch. So just in exactly the same way as I did the bias on the back neck, I'm making sure that that trim seam alliance is pressed over to the right. I'm stitching just about a millimetre or two away from the seam you've just seen me sew and also through that trim seam alliance underneath. Back stitching to start and to finish and I'll give that a good press off camera. So you can see that here. And now that that's done, I just want to hold the two pieces of fabric together on that inner circle. That will just help me out in the next steps. So stitching here within my seam alliance, back stitching to start and to finish. So that's how that looks. So that's my ruffle piece all prepped and ready to be added to my dress. So just lining that inner circle up right sides together with my dress front and I'm making sure that when I pin my ruffle I'm about a centimetre down from the fabric edge. That will just make sure that my ruffle doesn't get caught up in my little waist piece which I'll put on in a second. Ready to stitch and again I'm just tacking this piece on for now. So stitching here again within my seam alliance back stitching to start and to finish. So that's how that looks. So now that that's done I can add my side piece. So I have one layer of fabric underneath this pattern piece. That's that all cut out and I'm just laying it right sides together with my dress front sandwiching my ruffle in between pinning into place and ready to stitch. Same thing again here, I'm just tacking this into place, so stitching within my seam alliance, back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So that's that done. So now that I have this side piece and my ruffle all tacked to the bottom of my dress, I want to sew it permanently and I'm going to do that this time on the overlocker lining up the stitch line with my knife and stitching. And you can see here how those previous tacking steps help out immensely, making sure that the fabric isn't moving between the layers. So love that. And I just need to give that a bit of a press off camera, which you can see I've went ahead and done here. And I love how this looks. Super neat and tidy. So now that that's done, I need to add my waist piece. So I have one layer of fabric underneath this pattern piece, a 
and a couple of little notches that will help me position this correctly when I place it on my dress. So lining up those notches with the centre of the pleats and with the ruffle, right sides together and pinning into place. Ready to stitch. And just like before, I'm tacking these two pieces together in preparation for stitching on the overlocker. So stitching within my seam allowance, back stitching to start and to finish. So that's that done. So now to sew this permanently. So this time when I'm stitching on the overlocker, I'm going to add some clear elastic. And what this is supposed to do is allow the fabric to stretch, but more importantly, to recover back to its original shape. So I'm just lining that elastic up over the top of those tacking stitches, lining the tacking stitches up with my knife and stitching. So that's that done. So once it's had a good press, this is how it looks. So happy with that. And now that that's done, I'm ready to finish off my front neckline. And this time I've decided on a facing. My fabric underneath this pattern piece is on the fold. I have one little notch at the centre. So that's that done. And off camera I've just ran that outer edge through the overlocker just to tidy it up. And here I'm just lining it up right sides together with my neck and pinning into place. And this time I'm going straight to the overlocker, stitching at my one centimetre seam alliance, taking it nice and gently. So that's that done. And just like before, I want to understitch this piece as well. So pressing the facing away from the dress, but making sure that that seam alliance in underneath is butted up against the facing. and ready to stitch. So stitching through the facing, through the seam alliance in underneath, about a millimetre or two away from the seam that you've just seen me sew on the overlocker, back stitching to start and to finish. So that's how that looks. So I've given that a little bit of a press off camera, which you can see here. And now that that's done, I'm ready to add this piece to my back at the shoulder. So just laying my back over my front, right sides together, lining up those shoulder seams and pinning. And ready to stitch. And I'm starting stitching here on the sewing machine and I'm stitching just within my seam alliance. And I'm doing this in two stages because I want the back and front neckline to line up as perfectly as I can get it and I can get it a lot more accurate on the sewing machine. So to finish off the neck completely, I just need to deal with that front facing. So I'm folding it over that seam alliance making sure everything's lined up and pinning into place. And I'm going to stitch this this time on the overlocker and insert some of that clear elastic at the same time. I've done that off camera, just in exactly the same way I sewed the waist piece on. So my facing is all nicely tucked away into that seam. I've got my clear elastic in and now I'm ready for the sleeve. I have two layers of fabric underneath this pattern piece and the usual notches up around the sleeve head. So that's that done. And here, just laying my sleeve with my dress right sides together, lining up those notches, and pinning and stitching here on the overlocker at my one centimetre seam alliance the whole way around. Taking it nice and gentle. So that's that done. And after a good press, this is how it looks. So now to close up my side seams. So just making sure those edges are all lined up from the hem of the sleeve the whole way down to the hem of the dress 
and pinning. And again, stitching here on the overlocker, starting at the hem of the dress, up over the waist, and finishing at the hem of the sleeve. So I've given my side seams a bit of a press, and while I was at the overlocker, I've just ran both the hems of my sleeves and the hem of my dress through it, just to tidy up those edges. I've pressed them up by my allowance and pinned in preparation for hand stitching. I'm using a silk thread and a super fine needle, just anchoring my thread at the side seam and I'm going to run a herringbone stitch around the hems. So picking up a little bit of the fabric from the dress at a diagonal down to the hem, picking up a bit of fabric back to the dress at a diagonal and repeating. I'll finish that off camera. I'll do exactly the same thing with the sleeve hems. And once they've had a nice press, this is how they look. Nice and neat and tidy. And with that, this little dress is complete. So I have my back neck nicely bias bound, my front neck finished with a facing, understitched, got my sleeves all in, got that lovely waist piece and those gorgeous pleats the whole way around, got my ruffle down the side, my hand finished hems, and this is what it looks like on. So I could not be more pleased with how this has turned out. I love everything about this one. The shape of the neck, I love the finishing on the neck, I love the length of the arms, the length of the skirt. Those pleats, so nice. Going into that gorgeous little waist piece with the ruffle. And if you've been following over on my Insta stories, you will have seen the inspiration for this and a little bit of the patterning. I've changed up some of the detail, but I think this style suits me so much better love this one. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, please do. And I shall see you guys in my next one. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye folks!